Well, if you've been drawing daily monsters, you probably have a whole zoo of monsters levels 1 through 5 creeping and crawling around in your sketchbook. So today we're going to move on to level 6. Heretofore, we've drawn all our eyes as circles with the eyebrows coming off of them, and that has a certain startled circle look to it. So for level 6, we're going to start our eyes with, you guessed it, a number 6. And the other eye will be a mirror image of that 6. And by tucking the line under like that, it gives us eyes that are round, but they're not perfect circles. Here, we'll shade them out to show. I feel like this is subtle, but it gives the face a really different expression. You can see the difference between round eyes and six eyes. So let's try that in an actual monster. We'll do our first eye as a six. Our second eye doesn't have to be exactly a mirror image. In fact, it's more interesting if they're each a little different. And we'll give this monster, I don't know, some rounded teeth. This looks like a friendly expression here. Rounded teeth are a little less scary than giant sharp fangs. We'll shade in above those eyes to bring out that expression. Maybe a little under the eyes. And we'll round out the fur of this monster. Now we can add in legs and arms, just like any other level. And there's our basic level 6 biped tetrapod. In a friendly mood, I think. Anyhow, let's try that again with another monster. Maybe we'll make this one a little less friendly looking. Big forbidding fangs, maybe a little lower lip to bring out the mouth there. And now we're going to use sixes again on the arms. See that? That gives this monster sort of a gesture, monster fists instead of claws. Let's try that again on another monster facing off. Slightly different teeth, we'll give it slightly different horns. Now this time when we draw these sixes for the arms, we're actually going to fill them in and make claws coming off of them. That'll give us nice dark muscular clawed arms. So this monster can defend itself against larger, scarier level six monsters. Let's remember to darken the mouths and then before these two eat each other, we'll move on to level seven. Now level seven, they start with the same kind of six eyes and then the fur all over. And yeah, their whiskers droop down over their mouths a little bit, but other than that, nobody's really sure why they're called level seven monsters. I mean, everything else is the same. Oh, you know, they do have these sevens that have all sorts of little magical accessories on them, and that might be it. The other thing that level seven monsters sometimes do is they'll pick up these big platters and they'll make sandwiches on them. And of course those sandwiches have, you guessed it, seven layers of ingredients. Hmm. Even the smallest monsters can be level seven monsters if they figure out how to make a seven layered sandwich. And that of course attracts lots of attention from lower level monsters like this little furry big mouthed quadruped here who seems to really like that sandwich. We'll darken the mouth to make sure the sandwich fits. And now level eight. We're going to start with, you guessed it, an infinity sign. And that becomes the eyes here, hair in all directions. We'll use that same shape for the mouth and fill it with teeth. Level eight monsters are distinguished by their expressions. They have the most intense expressions. They tend to be running around, jumping, moving fast, and making these great gruesome grimaces. Let's bring the forehead over that little sideways eight and try it with the mouth too. Now you can tell from that telltale grimace that these level eight monsters are some of the most, well, frantic and dynamic monsters, but also some of the most stalwart, dependable, honorable monsters. Some of them really make the best leaders, and they have the coolest magical accessories on their seven staffs. They also tend to have pretty impressive horns and really great teeth. Sometimes they are the, uh, the most frazzled of monsters too, but you know, it takes all kinds. Now once you've drawn a bunch of different monsters, pick your favorite one and we'll trace back over it with black ink. This is part of the pencil ink erase method, P-I-E, Pi. The black ink, as you can see, really makes the monster pop off the page. It's a much more eye-catching image. Don't those penciled monsters look sort of like ghost monsters now? Keep an eye out for little changes that happen as you ink also. You know, you might find some jewelry appears on the horns here. Or you might even find that smaller monsters come looking for protection and a little snuggling from these big, powerful level eight monsters. I think those small monsters kind of emulate the bigger monsters and look up to them. Maybe someday they'll be level eight monsters too. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, this little level seven monster is still serving up that giant seven layered sandwich. And we can bring out all the different layers with our ink and this furry quadruped has an even wider, darker open mouth now that black ink is in the mix. 
Maybe we'll make a few changes here. The tail's still wagging, but I think we'll bring that heart inside the mouth, which is, after all, where this little creature is going to taste that sandwich. And we'll touch that up and erase some of those pencil lines with a pink eraser. Of course, sandwiches like this will also attract little monsters. This little triclops tentacloid polyped seems to have her own designs on that sandwich. Uh, uh-oh. We could be in trouble here, folks. Better make another sandwich. I always start inking with my favorite monster of the batch because that's the monster that surprises me the most. You know that feeling when you were penciling this monster and it first looked up out of the page and made eye contact with you? Well, I want to have that same feeling when I'm inking. I want to have surprises happen. Like, you know, maybe I'll add some longer hairs here or there. Or maybe instead of a claw here, we'll actually have a smaller monster nestling in looking for a little protection from the bigger monster. I think these smaller monsters, you know, they just they just want to make a little monster-to-monster -monster contact. They want to hold a claw and know that it's going to be okay. And I think that's totally healthy. I think it's healthy for the monsters and for the artists here in our pictures. So see what surprises you find as you draw your daily monsters. And remember to wash your claws frequently, folks.